Okay, good morning traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, November 6th. Mike Boutros on the mic with you guys this morning. Kamal, Christopher, Mark, Marco, Michael, Full House today. Ty, Ziad, great saver in the room. Amen. Good to see you. So, it's midterm elections here in the United States. Um, you know, I'm not really interested in talking about the political background, but from a market standpoint, um, we have to allot the possibility for some um, volatility as you get into Asia tonight. Uh, voting results won't start coming in here on the East Coast till about 7.30, 8 o'clock, 8.30. We start to get the filter in of Florida and Ohio and some of the more uh, swing states that we're looking at at this point. Look, markets have priced in, essentially, um, the Dems taking over the House. That's sort of what's in the markets. So the other side of that trade is where the risk is, meaning if Republicans pull a win on both ends, that's likely to see broader risk sentiment boosted um, on what's perceived to be the administration's you know, pro-business policy. If on, on the other side of that coin, or if the Dems were somehow to pull it off on both ends, you'd probably see risk sell off pretty abruptly. Um, again, the political environment, what it means for politics, if it gets a split, guys, and we get gridlock, that's not what the markets are pricing. It's really the risk to the current uh, administration's policy as it as it pertains to business so that's the risk for tonight okay you probably like i said you probably won't get major results starting to filter into about 8 eight thirty. um so any dollar crosses you want to be um cognizant and aware of this uh, event risk obviously uh any uh larger risk assets in general will want to watch that today so on the menu now that i got that out of the way <laughs> on the menu heading into the start of november trade we have a lot to look at so uh, a quick look at the DXY. I know we've been beating that up pretty uh, aggressively over the last couple of days. Euro, dollar CAD from last night's update. Uh, gold and crude, both at interesting standpoints. I didn't give a crude update last night, but we we're heading into that last target that I noted. So I do want to go over that. Sterling, Aussie dollar, uh, RBA last night held rates as expected. A little bit of hawkish on the commentary. Aussie holding up pretty good. Kiwi dollar and dollar yen ahead of today's elections. Don't forget, we still have a lot of event risk outside these elections on tap. We got the RBNZ, we got the FOMC, um, and some ancillary prints out of Europe as well. So just keep that in mind as far as the event risk is concerned. Let's jump into the charts. Here's what DXY looked like yesterday. Again, we've been tooting this horn for a while, uh, this horn for a while. so you guys all know about that long-term parallel, 96, 98, that former swing high. We failed there last week. We're closing below. Intraday chart still showed also a very nice reversal off of two equal legs high, 97.10. Uh, interim support, 95.68. That's basically still what you're looking for here as far as slope on the daily chart. Um, so weekly opening range hasn't really offered anything just yet. Here's what the trade setup looked like last night. Here's what the intraday chart looks like now. You're still holding that slope. So as far as like trying to take any fresh short exposure, if you're not already in a dollar short position, i.e. long Euro, Aussie short, or long long Aussie rather, excuse me, a dollar yen short, um, you know, you don't want to necessarily pile into this one at this point. But if you are holding shorts, watch this region. 96.13 is the high we close. Now, I, I recognize that we've made a new high, right? This is the high we close from back here. But what I do want to note is that price in and of itself has had a pretty strong pivot there. Support, support, acceleration, resistance, resistance, acceleration. Okay, quick sail through last week, but you're you're also heading into that upslope support as well. So be mindful. You know, usually when you have all these big event risks, specifically because it's U.S. event risk, um, it's tough for a trade to break a major technical level just ahead of that. There's just not enough new open interest coming into the markets. Um, so there's going to be people on the sidelines. And again, you could get some type of price action like we saw into, like we typically see into non-farm payrolls or FOMC where the market just kind of holds a gyration into the release or is until we get more clarity, all things held constant. This slope looks pretty darn good. Hey, Jay, yeah, great to see you, sir. So any questions on this? Um, by the way, I have adjusted this. This is just the 38.2 line, not the 50 line. We started the 50 line earlier on last uh, week's update, but the 38.2 line gives us a lot of bit cleaner touch, break, acceleration, resistance, support. So we're testing right now. 96.13, 96, 96 95.99 is the 50, and last Friday's low. 
Um, and obviously the 618 converges on all those slopes a little bit later in the week here, down near 95.71. Uh, drop near-term bearish invalidation to this parallel right here. Again, the same 38.2 line we reversed off of, not too far from the weekly opening high, or the weekly highs rather, opening range high. And actually weekly open resistance has been pretty nice in overnight trade. There's resistance, there's resistance again. Here's the move lower. So it's gonna to be tough to see anything like break, give us a major run right ahead of this event risk. So if you're holding it, I'd be shaving off as we get into these targets, but um, do be mindful that bearish invalidation, you wanna to drop to that high right around 96.58 at this point. Any questions on DXY heading into US midterms? Okay. Euro looks like this. Eman says, I'm in a long Euro exposure since yesterday at 113.74 as of the coming event risk. Do you advise me, Michael, to close it? It's already now at the first resistance hurdle that you already highlighted to us. Yes. So here's what I'll say to that, Eman. Um, when I'm in a position, what's your entry from? 1374. Yeah, you got a great entry. Here's what I would say. Just the way I tr would trade it, man. I can't tell you specifically what to do. Everyone's got their own risk tolerance. But personally, when I'm in a trade and we're holding it into an event risk, if we're at a threshold like this, yeah, it's prudent to do something. Maybe reduce your exposure a little bit, take some, put it in your pocket. Stops at break even or better for sure at this point, right, man? We're not going to take a loss on that. Um, and then your real big levels, I mean, look, the 50% is just there as sort of a, a near-term target. The real big levels are here. 1480 is what I quoted in the reports the last couple of days. It's a confluence of those median lines and that 50 line that caught the high last week. And then the 618 of the whole drop. So 1580, uh, 1480, 15, those are both levels of which, yeah, I'd be looking to be a little bit more aggressive with booking it. Here's a pivot, though. Clear and simple, support, support, break, resistance. You know, again, Friday's non-farm payroll. Here we are once more. Into the US trade session, you know, I'm looking for this thing to break, just like we're looking for DXY. If this breaks lower, you know, not looking to take it outside this formation, but definitely a level of which if you have some on, I'd reduce exposure a little bit, bring stops, break even. Against that swing low would even lock in profit for you on that trade, 20 pips or so, uh, Eman. And then these are the two big boys on the top side. But this euro like setup has just been insane. It's so clean, it's it's alarming, <laughs> right? We were talking about 1360, 1345 since last week. Look for exhaustion there. It dipped right in that zone, and here we are again. Just don't push your luck as we get into that release. I do like the top side break of the median line. I do like these two targets. But right now, this is sort of the big level to watch. Make sense, man? Nice trade. Well done. says got you I will do all right right on yeah you're more than welcome okay so that is euro uh, we'll be watching this one like a hawk obviously dollar yen is a very um, sensitive to US event risk as well so we typically get some play on that we'll go over that in a moment but any questions here on, on euro all things held constant, guys. We have to remember where we're coming from, right? The whole objective for the Euro trade that we've been looking at is this rebound off of confluence support. Here's the weekly chart for Euro. Big, big regions, right? You got the 200 long week moving average. You got the former swing high from November of 2015. Resistance, break, acceleration, support, support, um, and upslope support of the entire pitchfork. This is the 618, uh, it's the 50, excuse me, of that range. Once we broke above that uncovered gap, support, 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 we probed through it, but no close. So what we want to see on a weekly basis, and again, this is going back to big picture stuff, right? We want to see a breach and close above 1436. That's the low week reversal close for the year. Still preserved, by the way, right? We never registered a new low here. So this is still the low week reversal close. A pivot back above that on a weekly close would be certainly... Um, you know, pretty constructive on the near term for Euro. And again, the daily chart, you have this consolidation right here. Look for that break above the median line. The big level, 115, uh, is what would clear the way for a larger advance. Here's the intraday chart. 
It was that 115 level. It's also the 618 of his near-term advance or near-term decline just from the October high. So the levels are super clear. Constructive above 1360. Let's see if we can't get this thing popping. That is Euro number two. Number three, dollar CAD. You know, this thing is just testing my patience by so much. Um, haven't gotten involved in it. It's, you know, it's concerning that, you know, this has been bucking the trend despite broad-based dollar strength. And that's what makes me want to kind of not continually, you guys know where I, I've been trying to short it against this region for like two weeks. And while the shorts initially pay off, they quickly fizzle out. Even on this reversal that we got into the start of the month, big old reversal candle, look what we did. We came right into that 200 or 100 day moving average, and then we just bounced right back into resistance. 31.30 into 31.55, it's still the main level we've been watching for <laughs> weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, that's the level to beat. I don't like dollar CAD longs unless you beat 31.55. So I'm still looking for exhaustion. Anytime you run into that region, uh, here's the intraday chart. You know, and here's what we were looking at. Oh, so by the way, Euro, no change, right? Uh, to those levels. Dollar CAD, you know, we're just holding that median line. We just pivoted above it. It's offering some near-term support. You know, this is just one where I just wouldn't test it. I want to see either another exhaustion stretch into this resistance region uh, or some real heavy on turnover and momentum or something uh, before we start to press this one. By the way, someone in the webinar yesterday, I don't know if you guys were with me on daily effects, someone pointed out uh, an adjustment to this to make it a shift formation instead of a modified shift. And it does look like it's a little bit, has a little bit more merits to what price action is doing. Um, point is the same levels are being highlighted. And whenever you get multiply, uh, numerous different methods of analysis arriving or deriving the same levels, hey, I'm all for it. So yeah, uh, third, 130.21 is the level we need to break to sort of suggest that we've made a turn. Um, if we clear 31.55, there's nothing to stop this from going right up in 32. So there's no triggers uh, or anything to put us in here just yet. I was kind of staring at this earlier. Um, you know, these just haven't been very fruitful as of late. It looks like you're making a attempt to trigger break here. Stop against the high would be the way you play. But even if we were to jam right back into this, I would not want to get stopped out before the reversal. So unfortunately, I'm going to need something a little bit better to take a stop against this high more comfortably on this one. Um, or if we break the lows and look for the zoom and retest, but just isn't there yet. Questions on dollar CAD. Again, remembering where we are in the weekly chart for dollar CAD, big resistance, big resistance. High week reversal close, 131.30. Again, that's 618. And slope. It's just the same parallel. Right? Okay. Moving right along. Gold. I'm going to take a quick segue and then we'll jump back into the dollar crosses. But I just want to cover yesterday's update in full. Uh, and then we'll take a look at crude too. Look, both of these are coming at pretty big levels here. So gold, um, we were talking about the threat of a pullback if it held, held this formation. Really, we need to see the upside stretch. Where's the gold chart? There it is. Um, so you guys know about 1, uh, 1238, 1235. We've been talking about that forever. Here's uh, what's going on right now. Okay. So... December lows, 100% extension off the lows, 38.2 off the high for the year, big, big range of resistance, right? Big, big range of resistance. And yes, you know, the threat was if we fail here again, and I still think this, guys, if we fail here again um, in the next day or so, I would be looking for another low um, to materialize before we start resumption. So I'm kind of 
indifferent here of trying to get aggressive on anything. You're still into resistance. That's all that matters, right? We were getting divergence a little bit into those highs. It was a nice turnover. Is this it or do we get the last drive down to 1208? This is what the intraday chart looks like. So it looks like it's breaking the slope we were talking about. Here's what it was last night. Right here. This is the 138.2% line, okay, of the range. And, you know, it's, it was holding resistance right into the close, holding resistance right into the open. The break saw acceleration, but guess what? 12.35, 12.38 again. So look, there's nothing to do here if you're not holding any positions on this. Uh, if you see an exhaustive trade and there's a recovery in the dollar, maybe you get the drawdown still. But at the end of the day, we're bullish on this thing. And if it tops 1238, upside targets are pretty clear. You got that parallel, comes in somewhere in the range of 1247, let's call it. The bigger regions, 1251, 1252, this is the consolidation break that we talked about. That was the actually measured move target. More importantly, the August 2017 swing low um, gives you a range of 1251, 1252. So it's all about this pivot for gold. That's all I wanted to highlight. And guys, a lot of these trades, like I said, might just range into at least the clearing of, because don't forget, this, we have all the event risks, not just midterms. We have multiple central bank interest rate decisions again, still over the next 48 hours. Um, you wanna be weary of price action in this time period, this environment. So we're constructive. It's just, I don't know if you get it on this break here. Ideal scenario, you see one more failure before I move lower, and you base that at this point, move these slopes out. I'd be looking for something like this, or something like this for the washout. So you're still constructive while above that slope resistance. Now support. Questions on gold? Number four, number five is crude. So here's the crude trade. Now, this is where things get interesting for crude. Um, if you guys recall, uh, that was everything from last night's update. Here's the previous night's update. But if you guys recall the update from the 30th here, um, crude was trading in this nice descending channel formation. Here's the bigger picture. We broke multi, well, you can say multi-year for sure. Uh, it's based off the 2016 lows, big slope support. The main pivot region that we were watching into the close of the month was right here, 6427, 6488. Uh, you have just a close low for there, a basic 236 of the entire advance, and the 52-week moving average. So all of it was lined up right there. It did sit there for a couple of days, excuse me, before it finally broke. The daily chart looked like this. A break to the downside, you're looking for 63.57, you're looking for 62.56. That's the 2015 high, the swing high for 2015. Decent pivots, not all that, but guess what? The break saw acceleration, and we're sitting here right now. Here's crude prices on the chart today. Okay, so there's that 2015 high. We got into it last night. It looked pretty bearish with that long wick into the close, but nonetheless, it's still holding. So no change to any of the levels. The weekly, uh, daily charts rather, still look right on. We're sitting right here at this point. Bearish invalidation now becomes former key support, 65.27, 65.82. This is still major resistance at this point. Um, now, what I wanted to highlight here is if we make it below this pivot, there's a real big region. Excuse me, right here at 60, uh, 60.06, just call it the 60 handle. The yearly open for this year is right there. A 38.2 retracement long term from the decline off the highs you made in 2011 is right there. The 618 extension of the entire advance off the lows from 2016, boom, 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 is right there. So you got lots lined up, just above 60, I would say, if this pivots below this mark. At this point, be weary, 
right? If you're holding shorts, this is a place where you want to take a little off the table. If you're if you're short from anything, um, you know, north of 65.82, I'd have a stop above that. If you're short below that, it's a, I'd be a little bit more aggressive with starting to clean it up a little bit. Okay, here's the intraday chart. We still haven't broken down slope resistance or basic channel resistance. Again, you know, the charts are unchanged. Here's what the chart looked like back on the 30th, right here as we were sort of consolidating into this pivot. Boom, 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 lasted till we got saw the break. It was instant resistance, took out the August low, took out the June low. There's a 2015 high. We're sitting right next level down, actually, right here. Okay, so look, basic slope resistance, basic channel resistance. Once we get through that, sure, look for the recovery. Again, I'd be looking for a reaction above this. If we pivot north of 65.80, that would be the uh, that would be the the reversal play. Now, um, this news that's coming out, obviously, with the Iran um, sanctions that are starting to kick in again. They've already granted clemency or, <laughs> I guess, uh, a buy, if you will, for uh, eight nations that are still trading on that point. Everyone's asking, oh, is this going to see you know, the drawdown in, 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 uh, in supply effect price? Hasn't happened yet. So don't listen to all the noise. Price is speaking and price is saying there's not much to worry about just yet. Okay. Northbound of 65.80, that's when you start to validate some sort of near-term recovery in price. Uh, all things held equal. This is the world right now for crude. It's 65.27, uh, 65.80, this region here, and 65.56. If we break, you know where to go, right? Just right around 60. Questions on crude. It's been scary how clean this has been. It's been scary how, how clean this has been. Questions, comments, and concern. Anyone getting involved in this crude trade? I hope some of you are in this. It's been, it's just been insane how clean it's been. Same thing with gold. Um, finally, right? All right. Put a pistol to my head. I do think this recovers before we break lower, just by the way, just as a side note there. Uh, this is pretty stretched momentum. If it pops back above this on a daily close basis, would be a near-term sort of bounce. A lot of times when you get these bearish candles into the low, it's like being an outside reversal into the low on a downtrend, right? A lot of times that's the exhaustion mark. So it, for me, it's all about the, the 6256 pivot. Okay, and just to give you a picture of what that looks like on the weekly chart, That's this, 2015, uh, 2015 swing high. All right. In fact, let me clean this up real quick. There you go. So big pivot, very important. Crude, number five. All right, let's circle back number six, sterling. My man, the sterling. So it's been great. It's been great. We like that the sterling has bounced. We've been looking for this bounce for a while. Um, as a disclaimer, I'm not in this. I'm still in dollar yen and Aussie, but not in this. Uh, unfortunately, didn't have the guts to get into it last week, but boy, oh boy, what a level. Um, Low week close for June of last year. We dangled into it here. The low week close for this year was right in that range too. Both of those low week closes converged right on that 38.2 line uh, of the pitch work, pitch work we've been following essentially off of the yearly highs. So really nice spot where it turned yesterday, uh, last week rather. It looks like on a momentum standpoint from a weekly basis, if we close above this, will be an actual um weekly resistance trigger break, right? So we're looking for that. Daily chart for Sterling still looks pretty clean as well. Here's what we're looking at. That descending pitchfork. Here's the trade from earlier in the week. I'll show you the intraday chart in a moment, but really nice spot. There's the low day close for this year. It's exactly where we bottomed out. Remembering again, last week we highlighted that Euro and Sterling did not register a new low as the DXY did. And again, these tells oftentimes of market turns on a near term. So here's the here's the reversal. This is still a big region for me. And if we close today above it, 
um, I think it bodes well. This is the 618 of the decline. Now, former slope support, we're checking that as resistance right now. And if you take the retracement from the high here, guys, chokes up that 618 even more, kind of into that zone. So very similar in that we're kind of coming into a region of congestion here. I don't want to get too aggressive on it, but if we're going to get a pullback, this would be a first spot to look. Here's what it looks like on the intraday, and here's what it looked like earlier in the week. So um, we were constructive above 129. Uh, weekly open support reached to highlight at 129.71. This thing gapped. Uh, excuse me, this is not weekly open support. This was the Friday close. Um, we gapped higher into the open. Look at that. We dangled right into it. There was a perfect opportunity to enter twice there yesterday against that low. First target, second target. Okay. Now, again, recognizing on this second target that you're getting ongoing divergence, there's a major event risk on tap, right? We got U.S. midterm elections. We got, uh, obviously, I mean, the RBNZ and the FOMC not, may not impact this, but the dollar move in general. Um, be mindful here. Okay. Shave off a little bit more. If you have anything long entry beyond uh, 130.30, or if you're long from below 130.30, put a stop against that and let it fly. If it breaks 130.130, I think you get a nice run right into the handle, right? That's just basic slope resistance at that point. Um, but if it fails sub 130.30, that's where you start to think, okay, enough. Look for a near-term correction. You're still constructive above 129. Just a beautiful move. Just a beautiful move on the way we came into support, momentum signature, it was a nice divergence trigger there. High right through the upper parallel saw rip. It's exactly what you want to see on a break of down slope resistance. Resistance, pivot break, you're now still constructive above this near term. Questions on Sterling. Hey, Michael, good to see you, sir, says, good morning, Mike, hope all is well. Could we take a look at Aussie? It's next on the list. You're a step ahead of me there, Mike. Okay, no, question, no other questions on Sterling. Watch for resistance here, still constructive above 129, essentially, but um, you might see a little bit of an interruption at these levels. You have some swing lows, the 618. It's just um, be, be, be prudent here. I'm going to put this back just so for the sake of clarity here. Um, Aussie. Well, Aussie, my friend, is ripping into near-term resistance. Now, the RBA came out last night, a little bit more on the hawkish tone, if you ask me, um, but I'm not a fundy guy, so I'm not even going to try to get into that. They didn't move on rates. Everything moved as, expensive, as expected, keeps the technicals in focus, okay? This is the first region I'd start to look for for concern of the long bias getting tired. By the way, guys, there was a typo yesterday on um, on Jamie's report uh, where the target was set to 71.70. I hope you all picked up that was 72.70 because we've been above 71.70 the entire week. <laughs> so I hope you guys picked that up. I'm sorry about that uh, typo, but look, weekly, this is just a slope of the same parallel, right? The same parallel for the formation that we've been in off the last two years highs. The, the uh, taking off the high that we made for August caught the perfect high back here in September. It caught the high last week. We're trading right at this level right now. 72.27 is the weekly reversal close for September. Converged on that line. So I just wanted to highlight that confluence region. We're there now, Mike. Um, if you're holding long exposure, you said you are still holding it. Okay, depending on where you're long from, this is a good level to just look for. If you, we see this breach, you'd want to see acceleration. Let me show you the daily chart. Here's Aussie. Okay, this is the reason why. So basic slope resistance. This is an objective stuff, Mike. It has nothing to do with my opinion. This is one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch. It converges on the median line we've been following right now. Here's Aussie from earlier in the week. This was the big region we were talking about, right? For the pullback, we're still trading below that now. So, you know what I'm saying? It's it's resistance. It's at downslope resistance. Uh, I've actually closed uh, and thinking about scalping a short. Okay, 
I'd actually rather hear that, Mike, that we've closed up here. You basically took the stretch right into resistance. Uh, well done. Well done, mate. You want to watch out here, though. Um, the short, I grant you that that's what I'm looking at as a possibility for a near-term trade as well, if the dollar sees some sort of error. Obviously, Kiwi has broken its downslope resistance, and that one's a little bit more well-defined at that point. Aussie has not. So the opportunity for an accelerated advance here with this breach, you're essentially looking for 72, uh, 36. You guys all, or 73, 36. You guys remember about this level? Ty, you're in the room, right? <laughs> we talked about this level for months. So that's the next sort of upside threshold that you'd watch if we clear this. But right now, yeah, I'd be, I'd be more interested in the possibility of some sort of exhaustion trade. Here's the intraday chart, and here it is uh, from. Uh, earlier in the week, no change. Okay, here's the weekly open. These are two levels with if we, we dropped into the weekly open, I was actually looking for possibilities for long entries. Obviously, we set a really tight range, RBA came out, floated right back into resistance. Here we are. Let's see if there's anything in momentum to turn this thing over. Not bad. So you got some divergence here in momentum, price action with a slightly higher high, oscillator with a much more dramatic lower high. Take it to a low in price. Yeah, it might be a play here for a pullback. You want to be nimble on this one, though, right? Mike, you don't want to get too aggressive. Um, it does look like it's a little bit topsy here for a, for, for a corrective pullback, but I wouldn't get too aggressive on it by any means. So there's your channel. That's what you want to work with on the near-term chart. Okay, and certainly that topside parallel or channel resistance further converges and highlights this region to 72.52, which is major resistance anyway. Love to see that. Um, and a stretch high close basis, you just want to kind of right there. That's that's basically what would turn me bearish, or what would. Let me say this, what would confirm a near-term drop light, uh, lower? You know what I mean? So uh, if we get some sort of trigger really on the, on the, I'm talking about like five or 10 minute charts, stop against, that would be the only way to play it. This would be where you take a little bit off the table. It's only 10 pips away. We're getting real tight here. So this is where you'd break it. After that, break even stop and let it drop. First 20, the first level would be 72, just a big figure. It's the 2017 open. That's not necessarily sort of a major level at this point. But there's no reason not to watch it. Market's been pivoting on that region pretty nicely. So 72 is your first level. A break of the weekly opening range low? Well, you know where we're looking. 71.60, 70, 71.67. Now, ultimately, I do want to just remind you that we are you know, favoring a breakout here. Right, Mike? So as long as you're recognizing that you're counter trend, I got no problem with taking counter trend intraday trades. Do it all the time. Um, but you just want to make sure that you're lighter, that it's a lighter leverage on a trade like this, and you're quick to pull your stop. I'll take a break even on those like four or five times. I don't care. But I'm not going to get aggressive on a counter trend trade. All things held constant, you're at down slope resistance. So it's make or break here. Uh, would love to see it come off a bit towards 71.40, 71.60 to get long. Again, I appreciate your analysis as always, Mike. Uh, yes, a tight stop. Cheers, mate. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good move. Tell you that much. And we're at resistance. So Jamie's looking for the 7270 stretch, a little bit higher. Keep in mind that the 100 day moving average is basically there at 7268. Love the level. But just ahead of it, watch that low day close from back in August, that 7238 level. That's when I'm going to want to see get beat to the upside here. And remember, if you're holding anything long from below this region and this pops, those are the ones that you want to sit in. Okay, those are the ones that you want to sit in uh, because you just broke major downslope resistance. And if you're in north or south of 71, I mean, you have like a cherry picked entry. Um, 
it's puzzling me at the take profit for 72 cents. Well, I have the the 100 day moving average right there, like I said. Oh, and a basic 236 of the drop too is 72.38. So that whole region is pretty nice. Just watch this, guys. If you're holding the long uh, and you're not willing to take a break even stop, this just might be a good area to reduce some leverage. I really wouldn't get worried unless we get sub 72.20 intraday. But the focus into the US Open is literally this like 20 pip region. All right. Um, moving right along, Marco says, okay, right on Marco. What was that Aussie Kiwi? So Kiwi, a little bit different of an animal, uh, in that, like I said, this was, this one made the pretty clear break last week, right? Huge move. Um, and we're right into resistance right here. looks like we're mounting it. This is the hundred day moving average and a basic two, three, six of the drop. So it's nothing like too crazy. The bigger range of resistance is this pivot right here. That's 60, 67 to 67.15, okay? Former swing highs, basically the September opening range high, a basic 618 longer term of the advance from the low that we made in 2015. And again, you can see pivots on both sides there. That's the level that would be sort of the flip for the next big leg higher. So remember, um, this was essentially a break of the October opening range, which was this drop. We never broke that range. This was essentially a break of that right into the open of November. So objectively, it does beg the top side bias to keep in play. I just want to be mindful of this range here. So for me, this is sort of same deal as Aussie, looking for the pullback play. If you were going to play a pullback on one of these, Mike, I would prefer you do it on Aussie. Because uh, I think the up, the the... The upside risk in Kiwi, I think, is a little bit more prominent on the fact that it broke that downslope resistance. So um, this one is one I definitely would rather prefer pulling back to, to buy rather than to uh, to try to short it. Here's the intraday chart. Um, uh, the pitchfork we've been following, a 1618 extension on both sides of that gives us the high that we capped basically on Friday. Um, and 67, 67.15, there's the range we just talked about. Guess what? that upper parallel converges right on through that into the close of the week. So it's still all about this major key resistance region for Kiwi. RBNZ is on tap. No change expected. 1.75% interest rate expected to hold. It's all about the devil in the details. We'll see if the comments give us any kick here, but it uh, needs that pivot above 67.15 to get this thing going for the next leg higher. Such a scenario, the level is pretty clear. 2017 low, 67.80, be just a first target on the upside. This is all contingent on some serious dollar weakness, guys. So we, I want to just preface it again uh, with all the U.S. event risk with midterms and FOMC. Be mindful, false break type of moves, kind of spike type of plays, but certainly will be an exciting Asia trade session tonight. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> That's Kiwi Dollar. Any questions on this one? Here's what it looks like on the weekly chart. Perfect rebound off the 2015 low week close. This is why I'm a little concerned here. You saw this slope hold resistance back in June. You know, 67.15, 67.10. That's what we need to clear. All right, last but not least from my list, and then I'll be more than happy to take any questions you guys want to cover, um, is dollar yen. We just have to cover dollar yen. The abomination is doing what it does. It came literally two pips within stopping us out Yes, last night. Um, we had to stop at 13.50, so I guess it's better, lucky, better luck to be lucky sometimes more than skillful, but look, this thing has set up a very clean weekly opening range right below critical resistance. It's going to pop away one way or the other, okay? The pivot back below 1265, in my mind, 1260 is but what would be the validation for a near-term high. Um, but until that gives way, you know, 
the weekly opening range is right below resistance. The monthly opening range is right above the yearly open support. So any way you slice it, over the next couple of days, next week or so, we will get some definitive price action here. Till that happens, trade cautiously. You know, I still love the short on the account of the level that we're trading at, a huge pivot in price. We came off the upper parallel, caught parallel support. You know, this is failure. You kind of want to see it drop back to that median line to get back in. Um, but it just won't, it won't budge here. Just won't budge here. So we're still holding the short on that. If you get um, the move lower, watch that lower parallel first. And again, 1260, 1265 is what we would need to see break to really validate that we're on a bigger turn here. Remember, this thing broke yearly slope support and then recovered right back into it into the close of the month. So for me, it's all about a break of this region. Questions on the abomination? Okay, that is number nine. All right, well, that's everything I had on my list, guys. Let me know if you have any questions or trade setups you want to review. Um, I know a lot of you have been talking about or been asking about the SPX. Look, I was looking at the SPX today, well, earlier in the session. You guys know the weekly chart, what we've been looking at. Here's the weekly chart for SPX and a log uh, function. You saw that we last week, we made a pretty decent recovery off that. Low week reversal, or low week close, rather, for the year comes in at 2617. We probed just below that. Uh, the resistance level never gave out either, though. This Not sure what this, oh, this is the 100-day moving average right here. Or the I'm sorry, 52-week moving average. Right there is resistance. Probe three yesterday, but that's sort of the level pop we need to see. What I was looking at earlier today was this. This is the chart, I, uh, someone asked about it in the webinar yesterday. This is what I was looking at. Now, there's a couple of different slope interpretations that also um, sort of work here. So you saw yesterday, literally we were talking when this was right here. For the rest of the session, it literally held that slope line. So what is that? Is that a break? And we're just sitting on that support, which would be a failure. So there's a couple of different slopes I was looking at. You could work with something like this. And that would suggest we basically tried to test that high. Um, if we eliminate this sort of you know, crazy dump last week, decent median line, decent median line, resistance, you know, broke, but I bet you that's actually a six, 618 right there. Whatever, we won't get too aggressive on it, but you get the picture. It's sort of like a little bit of a gyration here. If that real near-term upslope broke, I would have liked to see it be a little bit more accelerated than this. So I'm kind of looking for alternative slopes for the near-term that match a little bit cleaner. Um, at the end of the day, you need to pivot over the 200 day moving average to get this thing going, period. You know, if we pivot back through, fine. Uh, I would be looking for larger recovery towards 28, 2807, 2811 is the next sort of big uh, target zone here. But yeah, we're not out of the woods yet. We're not out of the woods yet. Still think you can definitely see some downside here. And again, you got we, we talked about the scenarios for tonight, right? What could happen with the elections? And definitely risk appetite will be the first thing to take a, a give you the tell on, on the market's reaction, specifically if we get uh, a surprise sort of win on both sides for the Dems. Not a likely scenario, but got to know the opportunity. EuroCAD, if possible. Anything is possible. Marco, let's take a look at EuroCAD, my friend. Um, here's Euro Looney. Haven't looked at this one in a few weeks, so let's take a quick gander here. Here's your monthly open. So big resistance just from the slope standpoint is right here. You got the 100 day moving average there as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a 618 right there too. Well, 
Wow. <laughs> oh, that gets me excited. Awesome. So you have critical, well-defined resistance at this point, 51.35. Uh, That's basically um, your 100-day moving average, slope resistance, and a 6.8 retracement of decline from the highs that we made back in September. Really nice spot. Yeah, this looks like simple consolidation to me at this point. Can't say I'm a fan of that. It's, it's too sharp. Let's see what the intraday chart looks like. going to be too flat if I do this. Yep. It's not going to work. Hmm. Um, I don't really see a play on this one. Marco, tell me what you're looking at, what you're thinking about doing. For this one, it looks just like a simple consolidation. Like I said, the region of that really would have me looking for some sort of reaction or a play would be if we rallied into here. Uh, that's very simple downslope resistance, bearish invalidation. If we get above that, you get the breakout, should see a really accelerated move. If not, this might be an exhaustion trade to short. Put a pistol to my head right now, I still would like and favor the upside here just because dollar CAD or CAD in general has been unable to materialize any strength, period. Uh, and we like the euro long. So again, I tell you guys not to correlate things like that, but there's nothing here to make us uh, bearish per se yet. Uh, I drew a fork from October 19th. A downslope from here. Yeah, but still, is this is this the one you were looking at? The one you just drew. Okay, yeah. See, see, here's the thing. Um, yeah, it could it could offer some merits. I wouldn't necessarily say this is that's a strong defense, but you know, not a not the cleanest thing. Look, here's weekly open support. Okay, keep things simple. Uh, if you want to work with that slope, uh, uh, you know, nothing against it. I'm just going to remove this for a second to show you. Basic slope support, two-point touch, not a major support, but converges on the weekly open. That's sort of your near-term bullish inbound. If this is going to rebound, I'd want to see intraday price action, well, definitely on a closed basis, but definitely even intraday price action hold that level. On a top side mark, wow, there is so much to look at here. Uh, all right, give me a second. Let me Let me check out this extension. This is just real near term, 618, as I suspected, this thing. <laughs> All right. That's the, whoops, it's your near term breakout level in my opinion. 
right there. So if we if you top two equal legs off just from this low, uh, based on the fact that this slope is pretty darn decent at this point, I'd say, um, it gives you like 50, 50, 50 essentially on the top side break. Constructive above weekly open support. It doesn't convince you. Uh, Marco is asking, what doesn't convince me? That slope, it's not the most convincing. I mean, the only thing that looks really good in that, to be honest with you, is the 50 line, right? I, I, I like this. Um, sometimes I'm just going to go with a more basic slope until we get a little bit more play. Uh, Marco, I don't I don't want to I don't want to dissuade you. I don't know if it's going to materialize. Sometimes you have to see these kind of give us a little bit more reaction before we have some con conviction to trade with it. All I can tell you is that you know sometimes just breaking it down will give you the same simple slope which we've seen clear price action to. And I'll focus on these a little bit more in the near term. Um, that slope you're looking at might have merit. I wouldn't necessarily say it doesn't, but I don't think it's that convincing just yet just yet listen if we get failure here for sure and that median line actually converges by the way not to digress on that top slope right there in the event of the breakout Hey, what do you know with those highs as well? Drop this 100. Watch that. Period. Keep it simple. 51.35. Let's just call that the breakout zone. Converges on that slope in time. That basically is into the close of the week here this week. Um, bearish invalidation is right here. Obviously, we have a new 2018 low, so we should probably not leave that there. There you go. Take a picture of that if you need it. Marco, does that help? Interesting trade. I can't say I'm a big fan of EuroCAD at these levels per se, but um, this would have me at least tracking this for for strength or, or for weakness to fade rather while within this while within this formation. 50 50 is your first level. I'd be looking for some some sort of reaction off that. If it fails abruptly on a sharp reversal, then this would be suggestive that this is just corrective, uh, and you look for the drop again. Uh, if we plow through it, I would expect acceleration, just like you got every last time here that you broke through that region. Acceleration, break to the downside, saw it drop, break to the upside, accelerated. Again, we tested it as resistance, confluence. If we breach, probably see 51.35 in a hurry. I just took the picture. I agree. Yes, all right, Marco. Good, interesting picture, interesting, uh, interesting pair. A real quick note on some of the Sterling crosses we've been covering as well. Sterling Kiwi, um, not can't remember who in this room was getting me all up in this uh, last week or the other couple of weeks that we've been following it. Uh, it just broke that upside resistance that we've been following essentially since the October high. Uh, last week was just disastrous, kind of just chop action. Um, even the start of this week, I didn't know what to do. If this is a legit break, we want to see last Friday's close hold. And certainly into the start of the week, that's the Friday close. Look what happened. It's the exact weekly opening range lows. So objectively speaking on this trade, uh, above 94, 92, I guess it's the 95 handle, but essentially the stretch lows, Friday's close. We want to see some more upside thrust here if this is legit. Now, pound yen, oh, let me write these down. SP, we went over SPX, that was 10. Euro CAD, that was 11. Uh, sterling um, and sterling yen is another one that I missed yesterday. Someone asked about this in the webinar. I, I didn't get to find it. I don't know if it was an SB guy or one of it was a daily FX guy, but look, um, this is the levels we've been highlighting here. Can't remember the last update we had on pound yen. Couldn't have been too long ago. Right here, into the close of the month. So. 
um, here, here's pound yen. Uh, here's pound kiwi, by the way. That's the level that we were talking about. We broke above this, and we're just sitting on this support zone. So all things held constant, the break of that multi-week downslope should see some more upside. Obviously, Kiwi strength is keeping this at bay, but here's uh, Aussie uh, pound yen, excuse me, tongue twisted today. Okay, this was the breakout level we talked about. 145.40 to 145.58, look what happened when we broke. <whistles> That's the exact advance that you wanna see. Little hesitation, right, at that 47.20 level, that, um, sort of confluence region but boy you're coming into uh, a major resistance target now again i don't want to stress that it's the october open per se but it's also on slope resistance this is the 1.15 uh, or excuse me the, the 1.5 percent uh, slope line of the range so you take this zone 50 percent of that extended caught the highs it now converges on monthly open resistance if we breach here likely see some more accelerated upside uh, for pound yen. Just want to see if this comes anything interesting. Okay. It's not necessary right now, so we'll just leave that off. I just want to see what this looks like. Maybe the play, it may be the play, keeps us constructive still while above this region, which is, I would definitely agree. Right above that. Yeah. Watch for the break. Pound yen. Period. End of conversation. All right. Well, through no other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, best of luck trading, guys, this week. Watch. Things are likely to get a little bit hairy here. Marco, do you see merits in following both Monday's Daily FX and Tuesday's SB webinar? Yeah, Marco. The Monday, they just we give a flavor to the masses, right? Uh, but we're essentially still following the same. I can't be as forthcoming with my speech. Obviously, there's limitations there. Um, but yeah, I don't see why I wouldn't, Marco. <laughs> More than welcome. Um, tomorrow or Thursday, Ty, I'll be, uh, it'll be Thursday. We'll be having the next session here on Thursday morning. Uh, Jamie's still on tap tomorrow, as far as I know. I think he might uh, shift it because of the Fed. So we'll let you know. Guys, as always, keep an eye on the homepage. I try to keep it updated as, as much as I can. So the webinar schedule. Um, here is, uh, you know, I try to keep that as updated as possible. So if you come into the morning and kind of want to see what's up next, uh, right now as it stands, uh, Jamie is on tap for tomorrow. So looking forward to that. All right. Best of luck trading guys. Like I said, watch it into the open of Asia. That's when we start filtering in some of the, uh, the bigger trades. Thank you, Michael. Have a nice day and fruitful trading. Same to you, Eman. See you guys on Wednesday. Cheers.